Everybody, my name is Nicholas Barthlow, uh, Harvest Family. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, honored and humbled to do this. So, thank you. Um, Proverbs 14, 12 says that there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. And that really sums up my life prior to Christ. Uh, four years old, my earliest memory, I remember seeing a picture of Jesus in, in my parents' bedroom, uh, looking at that picture and staring into his eyes. This feeling of peace and comfort came over me, and I just felt like I knew him and that he had done something very special for me. Uh, the household I grew up in was a very loving household, uh, but it was a very lost one. Uh, a lot of drunken nights, a lot of arguments, a lot of times as a child, just you know, being in a corner, uh, all alone, hiding. Uh, I would have my sisters with me as well. You know, we'd be together and just, just the chaos that was going on around us. Uh, other times I remember sleeping on the floor at my mom's friend's uh, house on the kitchen floor. Uh, so just, you know, I learned very early on and then even if within my own experience that, you know, love is, is within the human heart. It's, it's, very, it's very conditional and it can only reach uh, to a certain point. But the love of the Lord, that's unlimited and it's unconditional. And it's only when we tap into that love that we can allow it to express and reflect through us. Uh, 14 years old, all of the decisions, everything that I did was all centered in self, how I feel, how I can feel better. Uh, as a result, man, I became addicted to drugs and alcohol. Uh, 19 years old, I ended up in a, in a rehab and, and I was introduced to a 12-step program. At 19 years old, I learned the Lord's Prayer and I uh, really had an enthusiasm for the Lord. But uh, old ideas crept in uh, and, and Satan literally stole that seed from my heart. Uh, I ended up resorting back to doing what I always did and that was drink and drug and, and live for me and do for me. Uh, it created a feeling of emptiness uh, and just a longing for something, but I could just never satisfy that longing. As I got older, 23 years old, I got a DUI uh, because of that DUI, I ended up in prison. You would think that that would have ended up making uh, me change, but it actually ended up making me a lot worse. Ended up resorting to, to the things that had been creating that emptiness inside of me, that guilt, that shame, that remorse. The same things that created that inside me would be the things that I would turn to as a result. Drugs and alcohol were the only solution that I knew. And it was really the only thing and the only way that I knew how to cope. Just time and time again, you know, I would, I would beg God to change me. I would beg God to help me. But then I would go back to the very thing that had caused me to beg God for help in the begin, in, to begin with. 28 years old, I got married. Me and my wife, we were on a spiritual journey at that time. Uh, but we ended up taking life back into our own hands. As a result, we became homeless, uh, lived in a car. We. Uh, wouldn't eat, wouldn't sleep for days. And uh, we just really created a mess for ourselves. My lowest moment, walking downtown Columbia uh, in the middle of July, it's July 28, 2017. I'm trying to sell the shoes that I'm wearing for a beer. And uh, I remember looking over a bridge and thinking about jumping off. And I literally had the desperation of a drowning man. My mother-in-law, Judy, she ended up finding me and uh, she grabbed me by the hand and we started crying together. She held me and in that moment, the, the Lord grabbed me and he has not let me go. We walked back to the hospital together and in that moment was a moment of surrender. After that, I ended up back in a 12-step program. It was where I had an opportunity to really uh, live by faith and to practice what I believe and uh, to establish a living relationship with God that my life depends on. Ended up having a pressing on my heart. I'd been sober for about four years and eight months uh, through, through that program. And I had a pressing on my heart to go to church. Uh, I work at a retirement community. I would, be, I would read sermons for a lady on Sundays and she really helped bring me closer to Jesus. Uh, like I said, man, when I was out there doing what I was doing, drinking and drugging, I really realized now that what I was doing, I was seeking his face. I was seeking that moment that I had as a child, looking Jesus in the eyes and having that feeling of peace and comfort come over me. That's what I was looking for the whole time. 
I ended up in Harvest Church on March 13th, 2022. Next week I got saved. November 13th, 2022, I got baptized. And uh, it's just been an amazing journey. Uh, just growing in grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Just a love for the Lord. I no longer look at God as an inconvenience. God is my Father. And uh, I have a new way of living and Jesus is the way. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's truly what I have always been looking for. It's what I've always longed for. And it's found right here. This is my home. Christ is my heart. This is the greatest thing in the world to me. And today I have a son, a four-year-old son, a little beautiful boy who's a byproduct of God and his, his miracles and his promises. And he's just such a gift that every day I have an opportunity to be a father to him. And it's through my relationship with him that I get to learn even more about the father and his love for me and his love for us all. I truly believe in God's word and I believe in the gospel, the power to change lives. I uh, use my experiences to help sinners, to <laughs> help broken people, uh, people who are struggling with addictions, people who are struggling with alcoholism, people who are struggling with overeating, people who are struggling with gambling. The, the whole the list, you know, the whole gamut. You know, I'm, I just know that I'm here to help people. And I truly believe that it's through God's word that I'll be able to do that, sharing it, learning it, teaching it. And I just want to do whatever I possibly can to, to continue to be obedient to God's call in my life and to serve his children. Because I truly believe that the love of God is not meant just for us to keep to ourselves. It's meant for us to reflect it and demonstrate it upon his children, to be of service to them. And that's where I find my passion in life today.